This is it, you guys. This is the final video of the series. And this is really exciting because I have packaged together this entire asset in a single one click to install file. So today we're gonna to be showing how to import that and directly import these first and third person controllers into a new or existing project. So let's jump right into it and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'll show is how to import this asset into a new URP project. So you can see that I'm setting up a URP project here. Select the 3D URP project template, and I'm just giving it the name URP test and create that project. Here we are in our empty URP project. The next thing we're gonna do is head over to my Patreon account. And don't worry, this asset is totally free. You don't have to subscribe or anything. I will link this directly in the description, but from my homepage, find the final character controller post, click on that, and then we can just download this Unity package file. Now all we do here is navigate to the final character controller asset and drag it into our assets folder in the Unity project. It's gonna ask you to install and upgrade, click that button and let it do its thing. Now this is a bit of a frustration, but it's gonna ask you to restart the editor. So first of all, you have to do this, so definitely click yes. But it's annoying because mine isn't actually letting me import the asset before I do that. It's just upgrading the packages and restarting. So your Unity should restart, and we're going to have to kind of just repeat this process. So drag that final character controller asset into the assets folder, and you can click install and upgrade again, but this time it shouldn't really do anything. Then click import to grab all of the player controller assets. We have now successfully installed our player controller. Let's try some things out. So there's a demo scene that ships with the package. Open that demo scene up and go into the play mode and everything should just be working. If it doesn't work for you guys for any reason, please let me know in the comments and I'll pin the answers to those questions. Real quick guys, if you're finding this asset helpful, please remember I've spent over 200 hours developing it and making these videos. So if you are able to subscribe to my Patreon or become a YouTube member, that's gonna help me out a ton and allow me to keep releasing these assets for free in the future. I appreciate y'all. The next thing I want to show is how to set up your own brand new scene and use this controller inside of it. It doesn't matter what scene you use, I'm just going to use a scene from the asset store called The Lost Temple. It is a paid asset that I got for free a while ago, but you can use any pre-made scene that you want or just your own scene. So I'm just importing this package in the package manager, then navigating to the new assets and opening up a demo scene. Okay, so one thing you should get really comfortable with in Unity is fixing pink textures. This is happening because we're in a URP project, but the default materials here are for the built-in render pipeline. A lot of asset packs will ship with a converter like this one. So in this case, I open up this Unity Packages folder and double-click the Lost Temple-URP file to convert materials. All right, great. So we have our nice looking scene here, but we need to import our player controller. To do this in a fresh scene, you have to first drag in the input manager from the prefabs folder then next you can import the third person or the first person controller by just dragging it straight onto the scene. And at this point, it should just work. If it's not working, there's a couple things to just double check. So really make sure that the input manager is active in the scene. If things still aren't working, try restarting your Unity project, deleting the prefab from the scene, and then re-adding it one more time. We still need to change a couple things around for this to be fully working though. You'll notice that our player doesn't have a layer assigned to it, that's because we created a custom layer for the player controller. I made a preset file to easily take care of this though. So what you can do is navigate to the tags and layers menu, click this slider settings button at the top right, then select the tag manager. That will import in all of the correct layers, but be careful because it will overwrite any of your custom layers. This is something we'll talk a little bit more about in a sec. Now your player controller should be on the player layer, and if it's not, you can just select the player layer and click change all children. If for any reason things still aren't working, I have one more preset that you should import. Go to the project settings, then the player tab. And what I want to make sure of is that this active input setting is set to both. If for any reason it isn't, or your controller isn't working, you can select this setting bar at the top right and import the player settings preset that I provided, and that should sync up your project settings with the correct ones. And yeah, I just wanna demonstrate that things are fully working here, so I'm just running around in our demo scene, our collision detection is working, and there doesn't seem to be any issues going on. Let's talk about one more common use case for game devs, importing this asset into an already existing project. 
This can be a little more tricky because we need to make sure that we don't overwrite any existing settings or possibly convert materials. So let's go and try that out. For this demonstration, I'm actually gonna be using an open world project that I've been developing on my channel. So I have that open now, and this is a bit different because it's a built-in render pipeline project. First of all, drag in the final player controller asset, install and upgrade, just like we've done before. Then you're gonna to have to restart this project. Repeat this again after reopening, then click the import button to import the assets. All right, so first things first, drag in the input manager to the scene, then drag in the first or third person player controller. You'll notice this time that we have pink textures on our player. Now, I didn't make a one-click package to fix this, but we can fix this really, really easily just manually. So navigate to the free lo human low poly folder, and then the materials human, and then select all of those materials. You're just gonna switch the shader in the top right here to standard, and then everything should be working properly. Okay, so there is still a pretty big issue here though. You'll notice it says that my player is on the post-processing layer. This was a custom layer for this project actually, and it happens to be the same number for the layer that I used when developing the player controller asset. Unfortunately, we don't wanna use the tag manager preset in this case, because it's actually gonna overwrite our post-processing layer. So instead what we can do, we can create our own player layer manually, then just assign the player controller to this layer and click yes to change all children. Things should be working now. I'll just disable my old first person controller from this scene first. And I also just wanna mention that you can change the scale of the top level player object to change the scale of your player to fit the project. For me, I'm actually just gonna keep it at one here and head into play mode. And great, things are working. So now let's go into uh, how we can just customize this controller. This part is really for those of you who skipped the other parts of the tutorial and are looking for a kind of like a quick rundown of the features and how to best customize this asset. So I'll run over here to kind of just some flat ground, but one really key element is the slope limit. This will definitely change from project to project, so currently it's set to 45 by default, which means that we can walk up pretty steep slopes up to a 45 degree angle, and you can even see we can walk up the edge of this house at first, but then the super steep slopes like, you know, this, this roof right here, we actually run up against them and it stops our momentum. So we could set this all the way down to something like 20, uh, and you know, now we're not gonna be able to actually walk up this first part of the roof. So it's really up to you how you wanna make this for your project. You may wanna change the radius of the collider. So you change this in the radius of the character controller, and that's just gonna determine how close you come to objects before running up against them, or maybe it will change how your edge detection works when you fall down things. We also have a custom walk, run, and sprint acceleration and speed. I like the defaults that I have a lot, but you know, feel free to play around with these. One thing that you have to be careful with though is all of the accelerations must be bigger than the drag. The drag is currently set to 20, so all accelerations should probably be at least 25 or so. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to move in that state. Another common feature you'll wanna play around with is the in-air acceleration. This kind of determines how much you can lean and change your momentum in the air. Even though it's not totally realistic to be able to do that, most games implement this just because it makes the player movement feel a lot more responsive. So I would recommend setting this to a non-zero value. Of course, there's also the jump speed, which is gonna determine how high you can jump. But then let's scroll all the way down and see one of the coolest features of this player controller. So depending on which movement state that we're in, we have a player state variable that is constantly getting updated and telling us what state the controller is in. You can see that in the bottom right corner of the inspector. And in this case, there, uh, if there's any issue or if you find a bug, this can be really helpful for determining what state that you're in when the issue occurs and it can help you diagnose why something odd may be happening. We also have the locomotion blend speed parameter. I'll show you real quick what this is, but it's basically gonna determine how quickly your animation blends through states. So I have it set to four here, which I think is pretty optimized, but anything between probably like two and six should work. Uh, you know, here I'll show off like a really high value. So a higher value will make it feel snappier. So just kind of depending on what type of game you're making, you may find a different value works best. And you know, I, I think eight is probably a bit too high here. So I'm gonna set it back down to four. All right, then the very last thing I'll show is the camera zoom settings. Mainly just the camera zoom speed here that can be adjusted. I think double actually the default value feels a bit nicer at 0 0.2 than 0 0.1. 
Uh, and so you can also adjust the minimum and maximum zoom if you would like. So we can go all the way out to something like 10 if you really wanted to. But I think for most games, something in the range of five is gonna be the default. All right, you guys, well, I think that's about it to show. I'm just gonna run around here for a bit in this project while I say a few final things about this project and the future of it. So my plan is to take a little break and let you guys play around with it a bit in your own projects. And please let me know what kind of additional features that are important to you. I'm gonna do one follow-up video in the future based off of all your comments. And in that video, I'm gonna add the most commonly asked for features, and then we'll actually implement multiplayer as well at the end using something called Fishnet. I think that's about it, y'all. I do wanna shout out all of those who have been supporting me on Patreon and YouTube. Here's everyone. Uh, thank you guys so much. Many of you have subscribed since I began this series, and I really do appreciate that. So best of luck game devving, and I will see you next time. Peace.